Hi, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. I'm Penny and I'm so glad you're with me today. I don't know about you, but I really don't like it when someone gets bullied. Well, that's happening in our chicken coop. If you've heard the phrase pecking order, it's a real thing. Our chickens that are bigger and feistier are picking on the smaller, more mild, timid chickens. And so what happens is they end up being raw right between their, I guess what you would call shoulder blades because a chicken will come up and peck on it. So in order to stop this and give them a chance to heal, I'm going to be making some chicken saddles today. It looks like an apron, but it's called a saddle. It has elastic on it and you put that around the chicken's wings and then this apron or saddle will sit over that section that gets picked on. And that'll give it a chance to heal and hopefully the bully chickens will decide it's not worth messing with. Let's get busy. I found this pattern on a website called Hello Sewing. So I will link that in the description box of the video if you have some chickens that you need to protect. I went ahead and started by cutting out the pattern. So let's see what we need to do next. I'm going to take the pattern off. She suggests using some heavyweight fabric. Well, I have several chickens that I need to make these for, so I've decided to use some bright colors, but what I'm gonna do is on the bottom, I'm going to use some denim. And I just cut these out of legs of old worn out jeans, and it's perfect. So this will be my back, and this will be my top. And that way, it'll still be sturdy, but, it'll have some color to it. If you wanted, you could just use some cotton fabric, two pieces of this, except you will need to put some interfacing in between so that it is sturdy enough. Otherwise, if you got pecked through this, it would still hurt. It w they couldn't reach the feathers and actually pull the feathers out, but it doesn't give you a lot of softness Whereas the two of these together gives you some good padding. All right, I cut the two pieces out and now what I need to do is connect the elastic. In this pattern, your seam allowance is one quarter of an inch all the way around. So when you place your elastic, you want to place it inside that quarter of an inch. You don't wanna sew the side of the elastic while you are sewing the seam allowance. So you wanna make sure it's over a little bit more than a fourth of an inch. And I'm gonna extend that elastic just a tiny little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in place. Now we're gonna take this other edge and put it over on this side. And we're gonna do it the same way. Now you wanna make sure that your elastic is laying flat. You don't want it twisted so that when you go to put it on your bird, it's got a twist in it. So you just kind of pull it straight so you know it's flat and then turn it and put it in position. And then I'm going to pin it. So at this point, we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew across the elastic to hold it in place. It's going to do like a back stitch within the fourth of an inch. So I'm not quite gonna go the fourth of an inch and just tack it down. And I'll go back and forth on both sides. Cut off my extra strings. All right. Now that we have this sewn in place, you'll notice that this was put on the right side of the fabric. So this is the wrong side. 
This is the right side. Now this is the right side. It's the orange side. This is the wrong side. When we sew these together, we want to put our right sides together like this. So this is the right side. This is the right side. And then we're going to sew around the edges. But I want to make sure that I don't accidentally like move that over and get it sewn into the edge or anything. So I'm going to pin the elastic kind of off to the side, but I cannot pin it in here because after I sew this together, I have to turn it through this hole right here. And I don't want to be pulling those pins in and out, not knowing where they're going to poke me at. So I'm going to go on the back side and pin it there. That way it's held in place, but I'm not going to be poking myself. There we go. I got both of those pinned. Now I'm going to put this over here, right sides together again. And I'm going to pin just some general places. You can pin as much as you feel comfortable with. If you don't need to pin, that's fine too. I always like to just make sure it's not going to slip and slide on me. I'm just pinning in like these bigger areas, but you could go through and pin on the edges all the way, like every once in a while, pin an edge so that it, there's no shifting because you are going to be making curves in your sewing. It might be nice to have it not shift on you. So this is one way that you could do it. Just pin it all the way around. You need to remember, you're not going to sew this top area. I'm gonna pin it just because I wanna hold it still, but I'm not gonna sew there. What I'm gonna do is I will start here and I will work my way around and down and around back to here and leave this open. Let's go sew. Most usually when you're sewing, the edge of your presser foot is one fourth inch. So I'm just going to take the edge of my presser foot and follow along the edge of the fabric. Now you do want to back stitch at the top so that when you're turning it, it doesn't rip apart on you. When you get to about a fourth of an inch from the edge on that first corner, you want to stop it, put, leave your needle in the corner, and turn and pivot. Okay, when you're going around your corners, you might need to stop it and kind of turn it a little bit if you're new at this. That way you won't have buckles and puckers. I'm coming to my other corner. So as I get about a fourth of an inch away, I'm gonna stop. And pivot. and then back stitch at the top. And there you go. Clip your threads. Okay, we took our pins out, and now before we turn it, we need to first of all flip this over. We wanna take our pins out that we're holding the elastic inside, because when we go to turn it, we don't wanna poke ourselves. And anytime you have a curve when you're sewing, you want to clip that curve so that it turns nicely. So I'm going to just use my scissors and clip up to, but not through my stitching. If you accidentally clip through your stitching, you will need to go back and stitch over it again so that it doesn't leave a hole. Okay, this outer edge, I'm gonna do the same thing. 
So the reason we do this, especially here, is when we turn it, see how it kind of opens up? It just gives it more play to make the turn. And after we turn it, this seam allowance will be laying on the inside. And so you want it to be able to overlap each other as it's sitting in there, instead of just being too much fabric and causing like a big wrinkle. So that's why we have to clip the corners so that they lay nicely next to each other. And we wanna clip these also. All right, with everything clipped, now I'm going to reach in this hole with my pointer finger and my thumb and I'm gonna go down and grab this end of the fabric. And then I'm gonna pull it through. So then I will just continue pulling this through. And then you can also push it through. There's no real right way to do it as long as it gets turned. So then I'm going to kind of find the areas. Oh, I forgot one important thing. Okay, when we're clipping, when we have a corner, you want to clip off the point of the corner. You don't want to clip stitches just at the very top of that corner so that when it goes inside out, it doesn't have that extra fabric to keep it from being a nice corner after you turn it. Snip those corners. Now you could use something like a knitting needle to kind of follow along the seams and open everything up the way it needs to be so that you get a nice crisp corner there and then take it in the other side and I just kind of run along the side seam and pull up and that pulls the fabric up in the place it's supposed to be. Now I'm gonna just use it to run along the edges to poke out all the shape the way it's supposed to be. You could use your scissors. You just want to be careful not to open and close your scissors in there and end up cutting something. So that's why I like to use something other than scissors. Then we're going to bring the sides out also so that it's a nice crisp seams all the way around. I want to give you an idea of what we're going to do at the ironing board. Um, we're going to go to whatever fabric is going to be laying against the chicken's back. So for me, that's the denim side. And on the top part, we are going to fold that down just a little bit and we're going to press it. We will iron that down, then we're going to lay the elastic over it just under where we have just pressed and we're gonna fold it again. It's kinda hard to do with my fingers. Let me see if I can pin it in place for you. We want the elastic to be free and I'll show you why here in just a second. All right, that's what it's gonna look like and if you don't get the elastic caught then it will pull like this because when you put this on your chicken, you're going to open this up and grab their wing and pull it through here. Then you're going to pull this over here to this side and pull, put this wing in it. And then you can even it out on them like that. You will sew right along this edge. Let's go to the ironing board and I'll show you again. So I'm just taking my iron and pressing it. If I fold it once and press it, then I fold it and press it again. Then I can slip my elastic under there and I will sew right along this edge to hold it down. And then my elastic can pull from side to side. So I'm just going to Put this in and go straight across. I will go back and tack it down at the beginning. I'm going right on the edge. Click. 
clip. And now you can see I can pull this elastic back and forth. So one other thing I did on this is starting right here, not up here because you don't want to sew your elastic down, but below that seam, below this seam, I started going around about a half of my presser foot as my guide and I went all the way around to hold the fabrics together so that they'll be sturdy and stay together nicely. That is our chicken saddle. Let's go see what the chicken thinks. Okay, so this is what we're looking at, this bare spot on her back. And this is what we want to protect so that they don't keep picking at it. So we're going to take this and we're going to slide one side over a wing and then pull it over and slide the other side over a wing. Okay, so you take a wing and <laughs> you put it up. I got slimed! And then you pull the elastic to put the other wing in. And it has kind of this little like shoulder. elbow, shoulder, elbow, whatever elbow. that is up there. So it needs to come out and you can open the wing and see that it still can open its wing. So here's her back all protected and she doesn't seem to mind it. So she's been in the coop for a little while with this on and it's staying in place. I wasn't sure, it felt a little loose at first, but it's staying in place and the other birds haven't pulled it off of her or she hasn't tried to get it off, so it's working great. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have chickens to get picked on, I hope you can make them some saddles and make them feel proud too. Thanks again. And until next time, blessings on you and yours.